Good morning, lovely people of the planet. It is so good to see your smiling faces out there again. Grateful to be on the ride with you this morning. Got some movies. Got some movies to talk about. All kinds of good things. Good morning, lovely people of the planet. This is Jeff O. This is the Morning Ride Pedal Powered Podcast. This is episode one of season four. That just means that we're trying something new. Every time we try something new, we kind of start it as a new season. So season four, we're adding a video component. I'm gonna test this out, see what you guys think of that. We have also, hey, good morning. We have also added a Twitter account at Morning Pedal. Thank you, my sister, for recommending that. Good idea. So we can kind of, hey, good morning. We can kind of consolidate all of our communications about this podcast at, at Morning Pedal. Hey there. So we've got a couple of folks up here that are going about the same speed as I am, so I'm hanging back a little bit here. So how are you doing? How has your ride been? What, has it been a couple weeks since we've uh, had our little morning ride chats? I've missed you guys. What's new with you? So uh, summer has arrived finally to Boise. We have had such a great spring here. It's been like really casual, mellow, really cool. And then finally over the weekend, we broke 90 for real. So I think we're gonna be in the 80s and 90s from here on out. Although it looks like next weekend, they're speculating close to 100. That's all right. We did have a really great spring here, so I'm not too worried about it. So I've got a ton of movies to talk about with you guys. So many good ones. I don't know if you caught the, uh, that last episode of season three where we talked about some summer movies. And uh, it was one that didn't show up. It was one that I hadn't seen before. And uh, Jennifer and I finally saw it this weekend. I don't think she'd seen it before either. But it's a highly recommended film for summertime because it takes place. Hey, good morning. Hey, good morning on your left here. Hey there. Because it takes place in Brooklyn. And uh, I'm guessing from the music, well, the film came out in 89, so that would have been, it's probably shot in the mid to late 80s. And I think it came out in 89. And it's Spike Lee's Do the Right Thing. Now, I had never seen this one before this weekend and oh man it's a tough one Jennifer and I talked for like 45 minutes after it's like well, what about this and what about that and what about this and what about that so many things to talk about this film and I'd actually like to I'd actually like to watch it again before I really say anything because it's a uh, it's finely nuanced and especially since I'm a white guy there's some things that I think I don't understand and maybe wouldn't ever be able to understand that are part of the messaging here. But I do know that Spike Lee really took his cue from two quotes, one by Martin Luther King Jr. and one from Malcolm X. And he kind of wove those philosophies, which were kind of like the guiding, guiding principles, I guess, in a lot of ways for both of these men in terms of I guess social justice issues uh, in their lifetimes and particularly relating to uh, black folks living in the United States. And Spike Lee handles this really, really interesting. It, it's so good, folks. I really don't know what to say about it. Other than if you are interested in social justice films, uh, I highly, highly recommend Do the Right Thing. 
Uh, there's a ton of folks in that film that we have seen over the last, what is it, 30 years <laughs> since 89? Good grief, it's been 30 years since 1989. I was just a pipsqueak graduating high school, driving around in a yellow bug, had several skateboards. Not so much bicycling at that time because I kind of landed hard once on a half pipe, or it was a quarter pipe, I guess, on my bike, and that dissuaded my enthusiasm for bicycling for a while. <laughs> that was before we wore helmets. Oh, you see what's coming. You see it. Yep. Oh, gotta hit the wall. Hey, good morning. So, that's number one. Since we rode together last, number one recommendation, do the right thing, summer film. Uh, but prepared to get knocked over because that one's gonna be so, that was, it's tough, it is so good. Tough in a good way. And it's, it's almost even more relevant today, the things that, uh, the way that he brings up the issues. Uh, but I don't know anything about Brooklyn. I do not know, I do not have an experience of being a black person in the United States. I'm a white dude, so I think a lot of it is lost on me. But I think what Spike Lee was really trying to do is show us some of the complexities and some of the just devastating compromise that can happen, you know, when you're, <laughs> when, when you're not part of the crowd that's on top. <laughs> Anyway, fantastic film. Highly recommend that one. Another one we saw, and this is a more recent film, came out this year from Iceland. It's called Woman at War. It was directed by Benedict, directed, <laughs> directed by Benedict, S oh, Benedict. And his last name starts with E. I'm blanking on it right now. But it stars Holodora Gerhardt's daughter. I'm not pronouncing that great. Jennifer can totally get the Icelandic accent. She's got all those extra vowels in her head. I don't have those. <laughs> She's able to do them really brilliantly. Anyway, the film is called, hey, good morning, Woman at War. And gen generally what the film is about is this woman who is, she runs like a local kind of choir and uh, she's like the choir director. And she is also an eco-terrorist against the big industry that is happening in that is happening in Iceland at the moment. Oh, did you hear that when I went around that corner? What was going on with this wheel? So she uses a bow and arrow. She cruises out on the tundra. This woman, Haladora put her whole self into this film in as an actress and just <laughs> the whole thing was how part of it was how much she loves the earth <laughs> and she gets so dirty muddy hummocky it's so cool to see that she like relishes being among the plants and among the dirt and um, she gets help from folks along the way the way that they handle the the music in this film so we know that in film a lot of times most of the time that music is there to <laughs> make up for lack of story but also and i'm kind of saying that in jest you see that a lot in film that you know you've got that scene where they go to the the party all night scene in every indie film and uh, you wonder why are they why do we have to see this and it plays the you know the hit tune from the new hipster band it's cool i just wish indie films didn't all think they had to do that um, and I understand why they do, because you do need that kind of thing at that moment. You do need that moment at that, at that part of a film, part of a story. Anyway, they don't have that moment in this film. But the way that they use music, we actually see the musicians on screen. And so we know that this is emotional underpinning. But one of the most fascinating things is that... In, so in the film, she plays. She actually plays two characters. She plays Hala and Hala's sister, which I believe her name is Isa. But as we go through the film, her, her primary character, Hala, 
yeah, and I know her name is Haladora uh, in real life. We see the musicians and we see her becoming more conscious of the musicians' presence when we see them on screen. And it's really a fascinating way of kind of getting into the kind of getting into the mind or the, the soul space of a character on film. Like they're really trying to show it that, hey, good morning, that this is where the this is where the emotions are, and this is us becoming aware of our own emotions and, and how much things mean to us and, and kind of how desperate our situation becomes. Um, you know, as if you're an echo terrorist, you're probably going to eventually kind of get into some trouble. And uh, if you're trying to adopt a child, that's probably going to become even more problematic. Anyway, highly, highly, highly recommend One Minute War. Um, fantastic, fantastic film. And weird in so many great ways. So many great ways that this film is weird. But you have to see that one. Also, in theaters now, <laughs> I saw Echo in the Canyon yesterday, which is about the music scene and all the musicians that kind of landed in Laurel Canyon, which is part of LA, the Laurel Canyon area, in from 64 to 67, and it was really 65 to 67, but they kind of started getting there in 64. And so we're talking about Cream, we're talking about the birds, uh, Buffalo Springfield, um, the, the Beach Boys, uh, all of these folks in all of these bands, oh, the Mamas and the Papas, all these folks lived in this area, in the Laurel Canyon area, in this period of like two and a half years. And what really became known as rock music in the U.S., and especially the West Coast sound, not so much the Del Tone surf sound, but the West Coast rock music, um, kind of before psychedelica or psychedelic rock hit, all came from this, these recordings that happened basically within these two years. And it is a fantastic documentary. It is kind of put together by, or I guess we the, facilitated by, um, I don't know if it's Jacob or Jakob, uh, Dylan. So uh, related to Bob Dylan, of course, but his son is the one that is kind of the primary interviewer, interlocutor of conversation, as Glenn Gould says about Glenn Gould interviewing Glenn Gould. <laughs> But it really is fantastic. If you're interested in the, mu in the music of the late 60s in the US and especially the West Coast sound, you gotta watch this one. And even if you're not, you gotta watch it because evidently Brian Wilson of the um, Beach Boys is considered just one of the greatest songwriters in America. And I just don't enjoy the Beach Boys a whole lot. And so I, I honestly haven't paid attention. So now I gotta go pay attention because the Beatles, oh, the, the Beatles show up, well, Ringo shows up. Um, it is full on raining now. How crazy is that? But Ringo shows up and he was talking like how they were all blown over by pet sounds that uh, the album by the Beach Boys. So I got to go listen to that today. Tell me, what movies have you seen recently that inspired you? What music have you heard recently that inspires you? Because, man, I am desperate for some new music. I think I got some. I think I got to go listen to the birds. I don't, I don't think I knew how much I enjoyed their sound and what they did. But that's a band that I'm going to check out. Buffalo Springfield, definitely a band I'm going to check out. Um, and we know all these people. It is fun raining. This is so awesome. I did not expect this. It's probably going to rain this morning. And that's probably going to clear up this afternoon and be humid. Oh my gosh. Not looking forward to that. But like I said, it has been such a lovely, cool spring that I am not going to complain when it gets hot. I mean, I might become exasperated, but that's different. <laughs> hey, folks, thank you so much. For joining me on the ride today. Thank you so much for uh, letting me take a break there from uh, the ride with you. 
I have missed writing with you. I've missed hearing from you. Like I said, if you are interested and want to see what's going on with the Morning Ride Pedal Powered Podcast, you can check us out either on my website, jeffreyoliver.com. You'll just find the podcast link there or navigation on my website. Or you can check us out on the Twitter feed, which is at Morning Pedal. And uh, we're considering doing something with Instagram out there too, but we're just not, we're not there yet. We're not, not ready for all of that. So check us out. I would appreciate it. Um, I appreciate you being here this morning. I appreciate me being here this morning. Aren't you glad that we both showed up to live our lives today? I'm so grateful for that. So, hey, if you love riding a bicycle, get out on a bicycle. And whatever your bicycle might be, maybe your bicycle is watching movies, or maybe your bicycle is making music. I think it's time to make some music again, man. I am missing it so much. I haven't recorded anything in a long time. So, I think that might be another bike that I'm getting on. But we gotta find some, some other ways to get some other kinds of revenue going. We're working on it, we're working on it. I got some plans, we're gonna tell you about that pretty soon. No, and it doesn't involve the films. I mean, it does involve the filmmaking because that's happening. That is happening, continuous improvement. Hey folks, if you love riding a bicycle, get out on a bicycle. I hope you enjoy your ride today because it is the only one we get. Yeah.